What's up everybody? I'm Matthew. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Uh, I'm a sophomore at Brown University. I plan on concentrating in econ while taking courses in the pre-med track. And today I just want to share my recruiting process and the steps I took. And hopefully that can answer some of the questions out there or you know help some of you guys get a better understanding of how the college tennis recruiting process works. I just also want to add that not everything that I did in my recruiting process was necessary and given with the current situation with coronavirus uh, there are definitely some changes in the recruiting process so by no means take this as a direct guide for recruiting uh, but I still hope that some aspects of my experience uh, are helpful for you guys. So with that said, I want to share the five things that I did in my recruiting process. Uh, it all started with the initial email to the college coaches and I did this in the beginning of my sophomore year and it was a very generic email, something along the lines of, hi, this is Matthew, I'm a five-star recruit, uh, I'm ranked this, I have this GPA, uh, and I added maybe like a sentence or so why I was interested in the school. And um, I wasn't really expecting a response from these emails, at least from the uh, Division I schools, uh, because at that time, and I believe it's still the case now, uh, NCAA doesn't allow coaches to respond to players uh, until September 1st of their junior year. Uh, but regardless, I sent these emails out uh, just to put my name out there and just to let coaches know uh, that I was interested in their school. And I was hoping that in doing so, maybe communicating with them down the line would be easier. So because of NCAA rules, there's only that much I could do. And so for the rest of my sophomore year, I pretty much didn't do anything else. I did occasionally send follow-up emails, uh, updating the coaches on how I was doing in school or some of the tennis results I had. Uh, but like I said, they couldn't really respond. So um, yeah, there really wasn't much else I did uh, until the end of sophomore year when I decided to do something that wasn't quite necessary, but I still found really informative. And that's the second thing I wanted to talk about, which is making the first call. What I didn't realize until the end of my sophomore year was that although coaches couldn't email me back, I could still call and talk to them over the phone as long as it wasn't scheduled. So that's what I did. I called a bunch of coaches and see which one would pick up. And luckily a couple did, and they definitely were caught off guard but it was definitely worth it because not only was I able to talk to them for the first time, but I was also able to ask specific questions about their program and about their school. Um, but like I said, it's not really necessary to do this. It was really helpful for me personally, and I definitely think it caught their attention. So the third thing that happened in my recruiting process was having coaches watch my matches in person. Um, I was really lucky that I was playing in some important tournaments in the summer between my sophomore and junior year. Um, I was playing in the Southern California sectionals, 16s intersectionals in Louisiana, and the 16s hardcore nationals at Kalamazoo. And these were just great opportunities to meet the coach in person and also for the coach just to watch my game. Um, yeah, I mean, I can't, I can't deny the fact that this was an important part of my recruiting process. But I also want to emphasize that there's no need to be too stressed out about it. Uh, from my experience, I was way too nervous in the beginning. Um, I remember the first college coach ever watched my match. I double folded three times in a row in the first game of the match. Um, and yeah, there's no need to be that stressed out like I was. If I were to say anything to my younger self, it would be that these college coaches are literally regular people. They're not critically judging your matches as harshly as you think they are. And they're really just looking at your game and your character more than if you win or not. So as cliche as it may sound, um, just play your game and literally everything else will follow. Um, and if you aren't able to have coaches watch your match in person, I think it's a good idea to also record yourself practicing or record yourself playing a practice match uh, just so it can give the coach a good sense of your game and also who you are as a person. The fourth part of my recruiting process had to do with just staying in contact with the coaches. So September 1st of my junior year rolls around and 
coaches are finally able to reach out to players. At this point, if a coach reaches out to you, it's a pretty good indication that they think you're good enough tennis-wise and that they're just trying to know you better on a more personal and academic level. So for me, at this point, I was considering schools uh, such as Yale, Brown, Columbia, UPenn, UChicago, and a couple D3 schools. And yeah, during this time, there was definitely a lot of talking and a lot of communicating with the coaches. And some of the frequently asked questions are like, you know, what's your classes right now? What, what are you planning to concentrate in college? Uh, what's your daily schedule like? Uh, and they might even talk a little bit about their program and even bring up something called the Academic Index. And just to give you a quick overview, the Academic Index is a tool used by uh, some schools to kind of gauge whether or not the recruit or the player is within the ballpark academically of that school. And it takes into account of your high school GPA, your SAT, ACT score, and your SAT subject test scores. Uh, I can definitely go into more detail in some other video, but uh, that's definitely something that is brought up a lot in, uh, in you know, communicating with the coaches uh, during this time. Uh, but overall, after September 1st, uh, coaches usually just try to know you a little bit better on a personal level and also just try to see ultimately if you are a fit for their team. And that brings me to my next point. The last thing that I want to talk about is setting up a visit to the schools. So for me, more than just the academic and athletic side of a school, I really wanted to be a part of a place where I liked the setting, the vibes, and most importantly, the team at that school. So I actually set up a visit to all four Ivy League schools I was interested in uh, around November of my junior year. And yeah, I went there all by myself for about a week and I spent one to two days at each school and I really got a good idea of each school after the visit and which teams I connected best with and it really gave me a good idea of my top choices and uh, which school I really wanted to go to. Um, so long story short, my top two choices and offers were from UChicago and Brown and I could dedicate a whole nother video uh, why I chose Brown over UChicago but all I could say is that after verbally committing to Brown, I felt really relieved and um, yeah, everything after that was pretty straightforward. But uh, yep, that's pretty much my uh, recruiting process. If you made it to the end of the video, I appreciate you. Please leave a like if you enjoyed it, hit that subscribe button, and if you have any other questions regarding the recruiting process, what life is like as a student athlete, or anything else really, Feel free to leave it in the comments below. I'll be happy to answer them in another video. Thanks for watching again, and I'll talk to you guys next time. Peace.